So there's different things recommended. Um, definitely you can dump out any excess fluid when the treatment is finished. Um, you could use a vial of saline, rinse it out, and dump that. You could run the nebulizer until it's dry, but that requires staying in the room. And when, you, when time is of the essence of getting all of your treatments done on time, to just let the nebulizer run until it's dry so you can turn off the flow meter and put the nebulizer away. Who's got time for that? I mean, that would help, but probably dumping the extra fluid, rinsing with saline, dumping that, and then you're getting rid of any contamination. Here's a picture of a hydrolender tube. So it looks like you've got two pilot balloons coming off the end of the tube, but really one of them you hook up to suction. And here's a close-up picture of it. And you can see the suction port right above the cup. So if secretions sit on the cup, when the, the vacuum turns on, it sucks it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the problems with it is it gets um, occluded so easily. So if thick secretions will just go into that tubing and get stuck. See, the manufacturer claims that it reduces ventilator-associated pneumonia by an average of 50% in multiple studies over the last decade. It sounds impressive, doesn't it? Um, interventions that increase ventilator-associated pneumonia include overuse of sedatives and paralytics. So when a patient is kept in the bed for several days, heavily sedated, um, you have to use a neuromuscular blocking agent to ventilate them, um, they end up getting pneumonia more so than somebody who is awake and alert. So they'll give sedation vacations, and I thought I had that in here somewhere. You talked about it in the last, yeah. the last lecture. Oh. Yeah. Talks about sedation, sedation vacations. You've got to allow them to wake up for a few minutes, <laughs> and that it helps you to get we them off the them off the ventilator. Yes. Okay.